The princess called on my mother as she had promised and made a disagreeable impression on her. I was not present at their interview, but at table my mother told my father that this Prince Zasikin struck her as a femme trace vulgaire, that she had quite worn her out begging her to interest Prince Sergei in their behalf, that she seemed to have no end of lawsuits and affairs on hand, de Villain's affairs d'argent, and must be a very troublesome and litigious person. My mother added, however, that she had asked her and her daughter to dinner the next day, hearing the word, daughter, I buried my nose in my plate for after all she was a neighbor and a person of title. Upon this my father informed my mother that he remembered now who this lady was, that he had in his youth known the deceased Prince Zasikin, a very well-bred, but frivolous and absurd person, that he had been nicknamed in society, Le Parisian, from having lived a long while in Paris, that he had been very rich, but had gambled away all his property, and for some unknown reason, probably for money, though indeed he might have chosen better, if so, my father added with a cold smile, he had married the daughter of an agent, and after his marriage had entered upon speculations and ruined himself utterly. If only she doesn't try to borrow money, observed my mother. That's exceedingly possible, my father responded tranquilly. Does she speak French? Very badly. H.M., it's of no consequence anyway. I think you said you had asked the daughter too, someone was telling me she was a very charming and cultivated girl. Ah, then she can't take after her mother. Nor her father either, rejoined my father. He was cultivated indeed, but a fool. My mother sighed and sank into thought. My father said no more. I felt very uncomfortable during this conversation. After dinner I went into the garden, but without my gun. I swore to myself that I would not go near the Zasikin's garden, but an irresistible force drew me thither, and not in vain. I had hardly reached the fence when I caught sight of Zaneda. This time she was alone. She held a book in her hands, and was coming slowly along the path. She did not notice me. I almost let her pass by, but all at once I changed my mind and coughed. She turned round, but did not stop, pushed back with one hand the broad blue ribbon of her round straw hat, looked at me, smiled slowly, and again bent her eyes on the book. I took off my cap, and after hesitating a moment, walked away with a heavy heart. K. Sways je L. I thought God knows why, in French. Familiar footsteps sounded behind me. I looked round, my father came up to me with his light, rapid walk. Is that the young princess? He asked me. Yes. Why, do you know her? I saw her this morning at the princess's. My father stopped, and, turning sharply on his heel, went back. When he was on a level with Zaneda, he made her a courteous bow. She, too, bowed to him, with some astonishment on her face, and dropped her book. I saw how she looked after him. My father was always irreproachably dressed, simple and in a style of his own, but his figure had never struck me as more graceful, never had his grey hat sat more becomingly on his curls, which were scarcely perceptibly thinner than they had once been. I bent my steps towards Zaneda, but she did not even glance at me, she picked up her book again and went away. The whole evening and the following day I spent in a sort of dejected apathy. I remember I tried to work and took up Kitanov, but the boldly printed lines and pages of the famous textbook passed before my eyes in vain. I read ten times over the words, Julius Caesar was distinguished by warlike courage. I did not understand anything and threw the book aside. Before dinner time I pomaded myself once more, and once more put on my tailcoat and necktie. What's that for? My mother demanded. You're not a student yet, and God knows whether you'll get through the examination. And you've not long had a new jacket. You can't throw it away. There will be visitors, I murmured almost in despair. What nonsense. Fine visitors indeed. I had to submit. I changed my tailcoat for my jacket, but I did not take off the necktie. The princess and her daughter made their appearance half an hour before dinner time, the old lady had put on, in addition to the green dress with which I was already acquainted, a yellow shawl, and an old-fashioned cap adorned with flame-colored ribbons. She began talking at once about her money difficulties, sighing, complaining of her poverty, and imploring assistance, but she made herself at home, she took snuff as noisily, and fidgeted and lolled about in her chair as freely as ever. It never seemed to have struck her that she was a princess. Zaneda on the other hand was rigid, almost haughty in her demeanor, every inch a princess. There was a cold immobility and dignity in her face. I should not have recognized it, I should not have known her smiles, her glances, though I thought her exquisite in this new aspect too. She wore a light barish dress with pale blue flowers on it, her hair fell in long curls down her cheek in the English fashion, this style went well with the cold expression of her face. My father sat beside her during dinner, and entertained his neighbor with the finished and serene courtesy peculiar to him. 
he glanced at her from time to time, and she glanced at him, but so strangely, almost with hostility. Their conversation was carried on in French, I was surprised, I remember, at the purity of Zaneda's accent. The princess, while we were at table, as before made no ceremony, she ate a great deal, and praised the dishes. My mother was obviously bored by her, and answered her with a sort of weary indifference, my father faintly frowned now and then. My mother did not like Zaneda either. A conceited minx, she said next day. And fancy, what she has to be conceited about, avec sa mine de grisette. It's clear you have never seen any grisettes, my father observed to her. Thank God, I haven't. Thank God, to be sure, only how can you form an opinion of them, then? To me Zaneda had paid no attention whatever. Soon after dinner the princess got up to go. I shall rely on your kind offices, Maria Nikolaevna and Peter Vasilich, she said in a doleful sing-song to my mother and father. I've no help for it. There were days, but they are over. Here I am, an excellency, and a poor honor it is with nothing to eat. My father made her a respectful bow and escorted her to the door of the hall. I was standing there in my short jacket, staring at the floor, like a man under sentence of death. Zaneda's treatment of me had crushed me utterly. What was my astonishment, when, as she passed me, she whispered quickly with her former kind expression in her eyes, come to see us at eight, do you hear, be sure. I simply threw up my hands, but already she was gone, flinging a white scarf over her head.